Hi friends, Shay here. So it is time for another reading wrap up. I'm going to talk about everything that I've read in the second half of July. If you've missed what I've read recently before this point, I will leave the previous wrap up linked in the cards above. So as always with these, I try to start with the manga. Um, there should be chapter timestamps down below. So I've got a few digital volumes of manga I'm going to talk about. So we'll talk about those first and then we will jump into the physical ones that I have read since we last chatted because it's been quite a bit. So let's go ahead and dive right in. So I have three volumes that I read and borrowed from Maeve as I knock things over. <laughs> um, the first one of those is Chasing After Aoi Koshiba. And this is a really cute high school centered Yuri in which we have these two girls. One has very strong feelings for the other. And it's just kind of about their high school romance. The first volume, it's really sweet and really fun, but doesn't give us too much information. I'm interested enough to continue. But yeah, I don't have too much to say other than that at the moment. Um, the next one I have here is Mars Red Volume 1. This is a vampire manga and... Even though it's a little more on the violent side, it's not at a point where it bothers me. And like my line for that, I guess, is kind of weird, but I actually did really well and handled this one really well. So if you're sensitive to graphic violence, tread cautiously. I did okay, but not everybody will. Anyways, this one is a bit more historical and it's about these soldiers essentially that were turned into vampires and now serve their country in that regard. And it's really interesting. Really excited to continue that one. And then I also borrowed Kisses, Macarons, and Lonely Pie. Um, this is a short story collection from this mangaka. They are all BL stories. And honestly, I kind of had mixed feelings about this volume. I would say overall, I gave the volume a three star. Um, the best story is by far the first one, which is featured here on the cover. And then I felt like my enjoyment kind of decreased slowly with each one. Like the third one was also pretty strong, but like the second, the fourth, and the fifth, because I think there's five total if my memory serves correctly, just didn't jive with me very well. I just didn't enjoy them as much as I enjoyed other things. So that was a little sad. Um, there's one more that I did read, and that is How to Treat Magical Beasts, Volume 1. This was really cute. I've been curious about this one for a long time, and since she had it, I went ahead and borrowed it and read it, and it was so cute. I loved it so much. Um, I definitely want to read more in this series. Um, but yeah, this is about this young girl who you know, helps take care of magical beasts with her um, senpai and stuff. And so it's really, really good. Hi guys, editing Shay here. So I realized I left out a handful of volumes. So I'm going to quickly talk about them. These are ones that I sat at Maeve's house and read. So that's kind of why my brain just didn't process that I hadn't talked about them yet. So the first one is The Whole of Humanity Has Gone Yuri Except For Me. Um, this was a really cute omnibus about a girl who it's kind of a parallel universe kind of thing in this world that she ends up in all of the men started dying off and it is a race completely made of women they've done some things with technology so they could still procreate but there are no men and so it's all about the back and forth between the two places and what that means um, i'm not going to say too much because it is all contained within this one volume but I really enjoyed it. Ended up giving it a solid four stars. Would recommend, especially if you like Yuri, because the romance was quite sweet. I really enjoyed it. Um, next up, we have Peach Boy Riverside Volume 1. That one was really fun. So we have this princess who, you know, wants to explore the world. And she ends up meeting this person who's borderline feral and, like loves to kill things and she like admires him and so she wants to go on an adventure after him he leaves and she ends up chasing after him she cuts off her hair dad condones it like it's all good it's really fun really adventurous and there's a demi-human friend which we which i really love i'm really excited to continue that one another fun one was hadger skill volume one basically this guy he just has a power where he's not perceived by people and he's made himself an assassin. But now he wants to live a quiet, normal life. <laughs> and so this is about him learning to live a normal life and what he thinks that means. And it's hilarious. I 
laughed real good with this one and had a good time. It does have a harem feel to it, so if you don't like harems, you might not like this one, but I had a good time with it. And then last but not least for this clip is Pretty Boy Detective Club Volume 1. This was so cute. This was so fun. I definitely want to check out the anime now. It had a little surprise right at the end of the first volume, but this is one I'm definitely going to collect, especially if you like things like Oran High School Host Club. This is like a detective club version of that, and it's fantastic. Really well done. Really like it. Definitely going to be checking out more. So with that, back to previous filmed me. I do have three more volumes to mention. They are all from the same series, and that is We're New at This. This is the July Thursday, Thursday um, pick for us. We're going to be talking about it this Thursday um, at 7 p.m. I can't remember whose channel. It might be mine. I gotta remember and double check with with my co-hosts and make sure that we're doing that all on the right channel. But I love this. This was super cute and super fun. I don't want to say too much about it here. Tune into the live show if you want my full thoughts, but know that I will be continuing in the series. With that, let's talk about the physical volumes that I have. So let's get the biggest bulk of the volumes that I read out of the way. I read volumes 3 through 10 of of the red the light and the ayakashi um this does complete the series technically the canon story ends in volume nine and then we do have some side stories in ten that help flush out some of the characters but in this one we're following three teens as they learn how they are all interconnected to the world of the yokai in a way that they didn't know in the beginning and that's all i'm going to say i am so sad i hadn't heard about this series until Maeve was talking about it because now I believe it's out of print, but I was able to snag all the volumes before they got super pricey or anything. So if you can find this or get it digitally, I highly recommend checking out this series. The art is stunning. I really had a great time with the entire series. Um, I do wish we'd gotten a little more in the end. So most of these were four or five volumes. The last one is definitely a four, vo four star volume. But overall, the series as a whole is great. I will be keeping it on my shelf, and I am super excited to revisit it again. Next up, we have Bite Maker, The King's Omega, Volume 1. This is an Omegaverse manga. <laughs> and I was very curious when I found out about it. Izzy from Happy For Now read it before I picked it up, and she ended up enjoying it and was curious enough to continue to Volume 2. So I went ahead and picked it up. I have since picked up Volume 2 and read that, but that'll be in the next wrap-up. But yes, I am enjoying this so far. This first volume is like a three and a half. Like we barely get a taste of the story because it's a fairly short volume. So I am excited to continue past volume two. Volume two gave us a lot more meat in the story and I'm really excited to see where that goes. Next I have, I was reincarnated as the villainous in an Otome game, but the boys love me anyway, volume one. So anyways, in this one, this girl um, knows this Otome game and she is supposed to be the antagonist and the one who picks on um, the protagonist. But she ends up making some small decisions that make things a little bit different. And so all the boys end up loving her instead of the protagonist. And I think it's going to get really fun after this first volume. But essentially this first volume is here to just kind of introduce you to all the characters and introduce you to the situation. But it's a lot of fun. I'm really looking forward to more. Next, I have... Volume 3 of Cutie and the Beast. I still adore this series. I understand how some people might not enjoy the series and have ended up dropping it, but I really think it's adorable. I have a really good time. Then again, I really don't mind age gaps. She is 18. Yes, she's still in high school, but she is 18. And I just really have a good time with this. Her family's aware that they are seeing each other. Um, and it's just really sweet and really cute. And I really adore it. This... Um, third volume is so sweet and so fun and I really like what happens in this third volume so I'm looking forward to more in this and then last but not least in the manga category we have revolutionary girl Utena um oh I forgot to grab I also read after the revolution but I did an entire reading vlog about Utena so I will leave that linked for you in the corner that should be the previous video and overall I'm giving it like a three and a half four star um, for the most part, I enjoyed it. Um, I felt like the ending was far too rushed and it needed another volume or two to kind of breathe and slow down the story a little bit, in my opinion. And it's much less Yuri than I was expecting. <laughs> That's all I'll tell you. If you want more detailed information, definitely check out the reading vlog. 
So from there, let's get into the books. I realized in the previous wrap up that I did not mention that Lindsay and I buddy read One Lucky Day by Jill Shalvis. This contains two stories, Head Over Heels and Lucky in Love from the, the Lucky Harbor series. These are really cute stories, really fun, almost women's fiction kind of romances. So they tend to have a lot more meat and things in them. They're not just fluffy romances, but I always have a good time. I gave this five stars. Lindsay and I both, we end up really loving Joel Shalvis titles when we pick them up. So we both highly recommend Joel Shalvis. Next up, I have Cold Hearted Rake by Lisa Kleypas. Um, this is one of the best Kleypas I've read to date. <laughs> Um, I've not had good luck with the Kleypas I've picked up before this one. I ended up giving this one four stars. It did have some problems, mainly our heroine. She was not my favorite character. Well, it's more like a three and a half, I would say. Um, she was almost obnoxiously loyal to a man she was married to for a handful of days before he drunkenly got on a horse and killed himself. So, like, I really struggled with the source of the conflict, I guess you could say, in Cold Hearted Rake. So overall, I did like it and the writing was fantastic. But yeah, not a brand new favorite Kleypas, but one of the best that I've read so far. Now, I did do another reading vlog since I saw you last. And in that, I read three titles that all came out the same day. That's Last Guard by Nailani Singh, which I ended up giving four 4.5 stars. Um, Hot Under His Collar, which I gave three stars, and then Isn't It Romantic by Lissa K. Adams, which I gave five stars. So if you want my full thoughts on any of those titles, you can check out that reading vlog. But yeah, basically Isn't It Romantic was my favorite, Last Guard was a very close second, and I really did not end up enjoying Hot Under His Collar. So that's what you need to know there. And then the last physical read I've got here is Undefeated by Helen Hart. I technically I listened to the audiobook of this one, but I do own it physically. And this is the conclusion to the Blood Bond saga. I ended up really enjoying it. I had a good time. If you like vampires, um, definitely give it a shot. Um, but definitely check content warnings for this series or anything by Helen Hart. Assume that they're gonna pretty much have everything. <laughs> So just be cautious and check out the triggers before you enter any of her books. In this one, there's um, forced imprisonment, rape, memory loss, all sorts of things. Like it's, it's loaded. It's really insane. But yes, I still tend to like her stuff even though it's insane and bonkers. Judge me if you want. <laughs> all right, now we are on to the remainder of the digital reads that I have. So I have two installments in the Immortals After Dark series. I read McCreeve, which was five. Uh, no, that one's more like four stars. Um, it wasn't as good as Dark Sky. Um, Dark Sky, I gave five stars. Both of these, they have solid heroes, solid heroines. I really enjoyed both of them. There were just some things within McCreeve that rubbed me a little bit the wrong way, which is why I gave that one a slightly lower rating. But these or like books 14 and 15 in a paranormal romance series. I can't say too much without spoiling spoiling big things within the plot, but I ended up really enjoying my time with this series and I have the next book queued up for my Audible to read, well, to listen to. And I'm very, very excited to continue. Um, next on the list, I have Entreat Me by Grace Draven. This is another one that I consumed via audio. And I'm really enjoying exploring Grace Draven's backlist. I've found some really amazing things. I've basically enjoyed everything I've picked up from Grace Draven. This is a Beauty and the Beast inspired story. And I gave this one a solid five stars. I thought it was fantastically done. I thought all of the reasons for the conflicts felt legitimate. I didn't feel like anything was there for specific embellishment or anything. I thought it was all very well done, very well handled. Really, really, really enjoyed it. Last but not least for this list, I've got An Extraordinary Lord by Anna Harrington, I believe. And I think this is just my three strikes are out with Anna Harrington. I ended up giving this three stars. They're fine. They are just fine historicals. I just feel like I've read all of the stories before. And a lot of the times with, with the books that I've picked up from this author, at least, the romance suffers at the hands of the plot. And that just doesn't it doesn't feel nice. It doesn't sit well with me. So sadly, I think that is it for me and Anna Harrington. Um, again, we have a 
fierce lady who wears pants and in a historical setting, like she wasn't a bad heroine. I just felt like so much of it fell flat for me. So the, the characters kind of felt two dimensional. You only get the surface of what the author wants you to get from the story in the characters. And I'm a character driven reader. So that's why these aren't necessarily for me. If you like more plot in your historical romances, you may enjoy these a lot better. So I'm going to put that out there. So I believe that is everything that I have read since my last wrap up. Thank you guys so much for checking out this video. Let me know in the comments down below what one of your favorite reads from July was. And don't forget to check the cards for other videos to check out if you want more information. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.